What's poppin' gamers? You know it's been a hot minute since I made any kind of big sprawling medieval build. Medieval is definitely a style that I enjoy a lot, and apparently you guys do too. So I figured we are long overdue for a good old classic medieval city build. We're gonna be making a big booming trading town complete with a waterfront, a seaside market, a whole bunch of shops and homes, and a barracks for the local militia. Also, before I forget, in case you missed my video on Thursday, Thursday, do go check it out. I've got some very exciting news for you about my channel, but I can't get into it right now. Link is down below in the description, or you can click the card on screen now. Anyways, enough talk, let's jump right into it. This is Building Better Biomes. Alright, first things first, we gotta change up this land. It's got the right general shape, but let's be real, it's really not that interesting. Let's get going on some terraforming. Alright, well gamers, this is really unfortunate, but all of my time-lapse footage just got corrupted for this portion of the video. I know. First time this has ever happened to me. Normally, I'm pretty good about taking care of my video files, making sure that they're all backed up in the right places. But this time things were just completely corrupted. I tried everything I was able to do, but unfortunately I just could not save the video. So in its place we can kind of do a little bit of a before and after where we have the old terrain kind of just morphing into the new terrain. I know that's not quite the same as a time lapse, but it's really the best thing I can do in this current situation. So yeah, sorry about that guys. Okay, the land is looking pretty decent. Next step for our town is to build out a waterfront. I'm thinking a big stone platform at the edge of the land where we can put shops and infrastructure. And of course we'll need a bunch of wooden docks for the trading boats to hang out and unload all of their goods. Alright, so this is looking kind of neat. We're starting to get a cool kind of seaside town boardwalk vibe going. But of course we need to fill out the rest of this city. Mainly paths and a bunch of cute rustic buildings.
jumping back on over to the waterfront real quick, I want to take a break from making little buildings and put together a marketplace. This is where we're going to be having little pop-up shops for veggies, fish, clothing, supplies, that kind of stuff. It's going to be really dope. Let's go! Back to the buildings. These are okay, but we could use some larger ones, don't you think? Like some homes and taverns, that kind of thing. Onward! <laughs> Now, if you remember, in the beginning of the video, I mentioned that we'd have a barracks for the local militia, and now it is time to get on with that. Unlike these houses, which are a good mix of stone and wood, this barracks is mainly going to be made out of stone bricks and other strong materials. This is going to be where the town guards live and work from, and it's going to be in a high up position for, you know, like, overseeing and whatnot. Let's see how it turns out. We've got all the main components of our big medieval trading city, now it's time for everyone's favorite section, the details. It's not a good medieval build without lots of grit and detail, at least in my opinion. Bear with me folks, we got one more time lapse, let's make it a good one. And with that, the build is done. I'm actually so happy with how this turned out. Like, dang, dude, this place is enormous. 
As you can imagine, it has been a huge grind to get to this point. I've been working on and off on this project for well over a week and I really hope that it shows. I just really like how all of these things came together, the huge variety of different building styles, we've got like the brick and granite and more reddish hues of the church, we've got the classic Tudor house style that I use in plenty of different places over in the mainland, we've got a little bit of that sort of sandstone and acacia that I threw in in a few places, and we've got of course the classic stone brick and andesite and stone structures in the watchtowers, in a couple of the buildings, and of course in the local militia barracks all the way in the back. One of the things that I set out to do when I started this project was to really replicate the feeling of walking through an actual realistic medieval or renaissance era city. I want things to be like cluttered and dirty and full of detail and grit and all of these things because you know these real cities back in the day they were gross. They were really just filthy and crowded and cramped and all of that and of course that's not exactly a very good feeling to have. In my opinion it was really about the realism. Now of course I broke that realism a little bit in a couple places, mainly with the market stalls over here on the waterfront. These obviously I took a bit more liberty with the wood designs and the market stall designs and just the variety of blocks that are available in this place, but I just really wanted to make this place seem as lively and as bustling as possible. I think the combination of the huge different variety of colors and the, you know, semi-organized, semi-chaotic layout of all the market stalls really leads to like a coherent feeling of a bunch of different cultures and different places mixing together in this beautiful trade city. And of course, every good city needs a farming section. So over here, if I just hop up real quick, you can see I devoted a huge amount of land to farming and agriculture. The wall design and the overall farm layout is quite similar to the farms that I made in my 7 Quick Tips Country Farms video. And if you haven't seen that, please do go check it out. It is actually one of my favorite 7 Quick Tips videos that I've ever made. As I walk through these visually busy and cluttered and worn out streets, I really just like to admire the sheer variety of textures that I used in this project. Now of course it all looks a little better with shaders, but one of the really most important things that I was going for with this project was to balance out the different colors, you know? Too often in a medieval or a rustic build, you'll kind of just use like, you know, a million different shades of gray, and I'm still kind of doing that. Having the city on a waterfront and incorporating different colors like the brown and the oranges and the whites, not to mention the green of the grass and the blue of the water. But one of the most important things when you're doing a Minecraft build based off of something from real life is knowing when to use realism and knowing when to bend it just a little bit to make your build that much more appealing. Taking one last look at the project from a bird's eye view in spectator mode, we can really get to see the sheer scale of this project. As you guys know, I'm taking a little bit of a break from YouTube in the next couple weeks, so I really, really wanted to make sure that my last project was amazing. What a grind this build was, but I would say it is all worth it in the end. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. As you can imagine, I put a lot of work into these videos and getting more watch hours from you guys is the last thing I need before I can start monetizing my channel. Also, just as a reminder, if you have not seen my channel update video on Thursday, do go check it out. I'm gonna be starting a brand new series and I need your help to figure out what to do. Your input is literally gonna help decide what my new series is gonna be on, so yeah, pretty dope. Until next time, folks, this has been Leon, and I will see you all in the... Hold on a minute. What the heck is... What is... What is... What has happened? Oh, no. 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 No